This week on One Door Studios, we heard from you, a lot of you, and how you see Joe's gift unfolding on screen. Join John, Jay, and Steve this week as we share your thoughts on calculated and simulated. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another One Door Studios update, and a welcome back to John from his wedding in, uh, his wedding in his... Uh, <laughs> Finally, he got married. He found yeah. someone who would take him. Who got married, John? Uh, it was it was our grandson, uh, John um, John Taylor. His name is John. Yes, right. yeah, it does. It got handed down in our family. Well, I, I I know our fans and investors are happy to have you back because you know having just Jason and I on the screen, I think is a little bit boring. You know, I saw the spot. I thought it was terrific. Well, well, thank you, John. Uh, did you find your dentures? It's a great update. Very <laughs> funny. My, my, it was the only thing that made me go, what? <laughs> the rest of it was great. Yeah, yeah. No, that's fun, too. You can poke fun all you want to. Exactly. Well, we'll it's see me. see you in the water my... on, your, on your surfboard, and we'll see who's, who's daughtering. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I've, you've lost your dentures. I've lost my hair, but you can't tell unless I turn around. So Ooh. anyway, so last week we had a little assignment for our investors and uh, followers, and you guys really came through. We asked you guys to comment yeah. on how you saw Joe's gift of math being portrayed in a mm. film, like what, what TV shows and or movies that you've seen in the past. Uh, is kind of how you visualize it. And you guys, man, so many messages. And we can't, I'd love to read them all, but we can't, but I've picked a few out. Uh, there's kind of a, a a common theme in all of them. Uh, I want to read here from, from Kelly B. Uh, she said, I see her calculating as being almost like an augmented reality overlay that you would see as she's looking at things. However, she said in a second comment that I see how it was played out in the show Numbers or in the movie Beautiful Minds sort of like an overlay of calculations and equations and all that's going on in her mind. Uh, maybe something similar to Goodwill Hunting. So um, mm, I watched yeah. Goodwill Hunting and Goodwill Hunting is just amazing. He's just so intelligent. You don't even need to show anything on the screen to portray his intelligence. Right. Uh, and so has anybody seen Beautiful Minds? Oh yeah. So how Beautiful is it done? Mind. Yeah. Beautiful Mind. How is it done in that movie? Because I'm not remembering. Well, he's writing on the board. But also you can see in, in his, it's kind of, you can see it on the screen, right. what's going on in his head when he's thinking about it, when he's mm -hmm. not at a chalkboard. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking that, of chalkboard, uh, go ahead, sorry, Jason, you're first. Well, that, that actually kind of reminds me of what uh, Lionel Buller, I believe is how you say his last name was saying. And I really liked what he pointed out because um, Joe is not a machine. So yep. rather than having it like typed in, he suggested maybe uh, like like handwritten algorithms and things that when they when they come from her mind. That, yeah, that, I, I thought that was really smart. That'd be really powerful. Yeah. So somebody mentioned the show Numbers, the TV series Numbers. I don't know if you guys remember it. It was, uh, I don't know, maybe a decade ago or so, uh, maybe even longer. But it was a, a police show where a, a mathematician would solve problems through math. But uh, it was a little bit on the nose. It was really intriguing and engaging show. But I think that the examples were a little bit on the nose because he's always writing on a chalkboard, always writing out the equations and talking while he's right. doing it. I think that for this show, excuse me, for this series, Calculated Simulated, would be way too on the nose to do something like that. But it was intriguing nonetheless. Um, one person had a, a bit of a caution, and, and I would tend to agree. It was Adam Luis Ayer. Uh, he said, uh, this part of Calculated Story runs high potential of having an Ender's Game result where the written book lets you into parts of the story's world that simply couldn't be properly translated onto the screen, leaving those who read the book disappointed that the movie reviews tanked overall success. And I understand what you're saying there because it has to be very carefully done. I think the creativity on this part of showing the, the, the numbers has to be really, really well thought out. And, and kind of kind of agree with you a little bit there, Adam. There's an excerpt from the book uh, on Simulated, and this, this won't give away anything, um, but on page 40 and 41 of Simulated, uh, mind you, if you haven't read Simulated yet, how uh, the numbers are portrayed is, is on steroids in this book in comparison to Calculated. Um, in Calculated, she talks about people walking on the beach and she can calculate that and it'll take X amount of steps before they reach the dock. Um, but in, in simulator, here's an example on page 40, bottom page 40 into page 41. 
So she says, my, my eyes hone in on the picture and the sharpness comes over me. I look deeper, my eyes running over the lines of the symbol, slowly a spark, a drip, a taste of my gift. I blink and the measurements of my old room become a blueprint, like a light turning on. The numbers are, are so familiar, I nearly cry. Equations connect everything from my bed to bookshelf to all the more memories of my childhood. Laughter bubbles out of me until the lights snap back and my head starts spinning. So that's an example in, in simulated how the numbers are done. And honestly, in simulated versus calculated, the, the way she does the numbers is, is really is really amazing. It, it causes you to just, it immerses you into the book and causes you to visualize so much more than calculated. People say about calculated, you were able to really visualize her gift and in simulated, it's even more. It's, it's really uh, astounding. Yeah. Uh, well, another, well, I'm sorry, I mean, Jason, go ahead. Her, her, um, her gift grows as well. That, that was, that's one thing that um, makes it so that the numbers are more, more amazing as well. Yeah. Um, Ryan uh, McCready says, I see it as sort of like a machine learning overlays that they use in the NFL and ML, ML Major League Baseball, but going on in the foreground and background. Um, Arisha Ford says, I think the Queen's Gambit did a good job of floating her thoughts in the sky or above her head. Now, John, I, I've seen examples in the queen's game but uh but not so much as what you saw because i didn't see the scene you saw um with something about chess pieces overhead or something yeah yeah when she uh it's it's kind of a discipline that she she creates uh for her to use she wants to see the board but um what she wants to do really is to be able to have access to a board anytime she wants so she'll look up and see the board on the ceiling and she'll move the pieces and it's really really dynamic it's powerful and it i think it well demonstrates having read the book and seen the movie uh well the series um just how that was done so that that that's that's a great example yeah, yeah I, I think that goes along with um uh, i just forgot the name of it it's not interstellar it's the other one inception, inception. yeah inception as well as um the secret life of is it Walter Walter Smith? Walter Smitty. Walter Smitty. Yeah. Mitty. Mitty, Mitty, Mitty. Mitty. Anyway. <laughs> yes, yeah, the book. <laughs> um, it was actually uh, Valerie Notes. I might be saying her last name wrong, but I thought it was really astute of her to point out how dreams or daydreams are often portrayed, you know, in movies really well, like those two. And uh, that could be some ways um, that, that these things are, are portrayed really well. Yeah. Yeah, these are great conversations. And I tell you what, when it comes to this part of the creativity in the movie, there's going to be a lot more conversations happening uh, around this front. Um, today, we also want to give you a, a bit of an update uh, about a writer. You know, we've been a few months ago, we we were told you that we were hoping to have a writer signed on by the end of May. And obviously, it is way past May. <laughs> um, but not to be discouraged because at that time we were already ahead of schedule with our raise and we're actually still ahead of schedule on our raise. So when we've been, we've been reaching out to these top level writers and giving them exclusive reads, which takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time to get a yes. And it takes a lot of time to get a no. Uh, so we could actually go straight to uh, an agency and have someone writing lickety split. Um, but we kind of didn't want to take that approach initially. Um, Am I describing this correctly, John? Yeah, you are. And, and, and our projection, uh, if, if we go back to when we set up our forecast, uh, was that we'd have a writer by September. So we haven't, we're close, <laughs> but yeah. we, haven't, uh, we haven't eclipsed September yet, and hopefully that will happen. Yeah. And we're out right now, skirting around, approaching uh, the writers and not making it official uh, because when we lock in, then we need to give them time and we're, we're committed. So we're taking kind of a, a soft approach, lots of research, um, and, uh, and then we'll lock them in. So next week, we should have a report that, we, in fact, the book is out to someone specific. Right. We may not be able to give you their name yet again, but we'll, we'll be able to say that the read is afoot and hopefully we'll have like a, a three-week response. Um, people may be asking why, you know, why is it, why can't you just get anybody to write? And one thing to note in case <laughs> you haven't been with us is we're looking for studio approved writers, a writer that when the studios like, you know, Disney, Paramount, Sony, whatever, they see who wrote the film, 
that they're already going, oh, that's someone who's written for other studio release films as well. We're not just looking for any, not even any good writer. We're looking for a studio approved writer. So um, and there, there, are, there are thousands of writers that have been to film school and have written multiple scripts and gone, had been out to contests and won contests and so forth, thousands. There are hundreds of writers that have been produced. That's a whole another strata of, of writers. And then there are writers that are not only produced, but are well known and in big demand. And, and that, there are tens of those. Right. And, and we're down to a couple dozen writers that are really extraordinary. And, and we may end up, which is one of our options, uh, letting a kind of a workhorse writer who's really someone that is about to break into that kind of star writer status. Uh, that's now doing work for a big development uh, team. Um, and we may use one of those to get the story down and then go to someone that is either a writer director that's kind of a star or whatever. But even that, we're still, you know, just have a handful of writers that are, that will fit and will measure up to the books that, that we're going, that they'll be uh, uh, converting to uh, additionally yeah. we've we've heard enough times from people in the industry that this <clears throat> story calculated simulated activated lends itself to a series a tv series so <clears throat> before we may have been considering writers who only did features and now we've kind of shifted that to writers who have done both features as well as uh episodic so um because that is potentially one avenue we will take with this series yeah, it's going to be best for the to, books. It's a note to also point out that um, thankfully we have someone who who is on the inside with this small group of writers helping us. So eventually yeah. we may have to go kind of through the front door, but right now we can keep going through the back door with this this person or, si or side or, door or side door. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nice. So that's it. We actually. Uh, we had some really good news today that uh, came across uh, our uh, emails and we mentioned it to you last week. It's just, we, we've had a, a, an investor coming through with a very large amount and uh, they've been continually saying how they're, they're interested and they're moving forward. And, and now we should be, should be closing on it next week, uh, which will bring our raise up to a really significant percentage, uh, completely raised. <laughs> so maybe over 60% raised at that point. So. We're doing good and it's moving forward and it is exciting and we are encouraged and uh, we've had a, a lot of a lot of advances and a couple of setbacks not too bad but even these setbacks are still are still within the schedule so we're doing okay so that's well, the we like to be ahead we like we to, prefer be ahead. to be ahead <laughs> yeah. 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 but we're still on schedule so that's the, the update for this week. And we thank you for joining us. And, um, you know, we really loved all the messages you sent us this week. Yeah, thank you. And, you know, we still invite you to continue to reach out and um, give us that insight because this is your project just as much as it is ours. So have a good week, everybody. And we'll see you again next week on Wonder Studios. Hasta. Awesome.